Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today we are going to discuss a completely new topic in jQuery UI. We'll take you through the interactions in jQuery UI. We'll see what interactions are, their syntax and how they are different from widgets in jQuery. So before we begin, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates on programming videos. So without any further delay, let's get started. So far, we have covered widgets and their usage in the past few videos. Widgets make it easier for us to perform a function or access a service with less code required. We came across different types of widgets and their usage. It's quite easy to use widgets in jQuery. All we have to do is to call the widget with specific name and that's it. jQuery even allows us to make customizations in widgets, right? Now, talking about interactions, they have almost the same syntax as widgets, but the working and customizations makes the difference. Interactions basically let the user perform various actions on the dome element with the help of mouse without changing the appearance of the element. The first interaction we'll be going through today is the draggable interaction in jQuery. This interaction enables draggable functionality to any DOM element. It is used to move the draggable object by clicking on it with the mouse and dragging it anywhere within the viewport. This interaction allows us to move a particular element, whether it be an image or a box or anything movable across the screen. We can customize the way we can move the box with the help of certain customizations as well. Let's go through the official jQuery UI website to see the working of this interaction and then we'll use it in our own program. Here we are on the official website of jQuery UI and you can see over here we have all the interactions which are placed differently from widgets, right? We have all the interactions over here, then we have widgets as well. Click on the draggable interaction. Draggable interaction is the first interaction available here. Click on it and it will take us to a new page. You can see over here we have a box with some text present inside it which says drag me around. Click and hold over the box and try to drag it. We are able to drag it here, right? So let's achieve this thing in our own program now and then we'll go through the customizations as well. Here we are in the VS code. Now we'll do the draggable thing with two different boxes. So let's add them quickly. What we'll do is We'll write here inside the body tag. We'll use the div tag. We'll write here div. And inside this div tag, we'll create another division for box one. So we'll write here div. ID is equal to, let's say, okay, we'll use class for this. So we'll write here class is equals to, let's say, box. And we'll close this div tag. Now we'll write something inside it. So let's say we are writing here box one. Now we'll create another box. For that, we have to use another div tag. We'll write here div, class is going to be the same. We'll write here box. Then we'll write here inside this box, two let's say, fine. Save this program. And you can see here we have some text present on the screen which says box one and box two. So let's style these boxes as well. What we'll do is we'll write here inside the head tag. We'll use the style tag for this. So we'll write here style and inside this, we are going to make some style changes in these boxes. So we'll write here box because box is the class. We'll write here dot box. Now inside this we'll write, let's say we are using border. Border is going to be, let's say five pixel solid and let's say black in color. Fine. Let's keep it simple for now. We'll use the height over here. We'll write here height as let's say hundred pixels. Then we'll define width as well. Width is again going to be hundred pixels. And finally, after this, we'll write here margin. Margin is going to be, let's say, 10 pixels. And we'll align this text to the center. So we'll write here text align at this center. Fine. Now we are done with it. Save the program. And you can see we have two boxes now. The next thing we want to do is we want to move these boxes with the help of a mouse button, right? For that, we have to use the draggable interaction from jQuery UI. We discussed earlier that the syntax remains almost the same for interactions and widgets in jQuery. So let's add the interaction to our program now. Here we are in the JavaScript file and what we'll do is we'll write here dollar. Now we need to access these boxes. For that we have the class as box. So we'll write here dot box. 
and then we'll write here dot draggable it is a method so we'll use parenthesis now that's it guys we are done now we'll be able to move those boxes in our browser save the program and try doing it so you can see we are now able to move these boxes across the browser we are able to move them freely try moving them to the bottom and you can see the scroll bar appearing over here right the same thing will happen if we try to move it horizontally if we try to move it horizontally you can see the scroll bar at the bottom of our browser so we are good to go with that now talking about the customizations we have in this interaction we can control the dragging path of the element we can either make it draggable along the x axis which means horizontally or along the y axis which means vertically so for that we have to write here inside this we have to use curly braces for customizations the same thing we did with widgets as well now we'll write over here axis axis we are going to define so let's say we are writing here x we are going to drag the box along the x axis now save the program and you can see we are not able to move the box towards the bottom side right we are not able to move the box along the y axis what we can do is we can move this box horizontally only because we have defined the axis as x and now we'll be able to move the box horizontally only the next thing we can do is we can also change the cursor upon dragging the box to make it look a bit more interactive what we have to do is we have to write here after a comma we have to write here cursor and we have to define here grabbing fine this is the cursor name now save the program and you will notice on dragging the element the cursor changes right we can also change the opacity of this element on dragging you can see we have the opacity as one because the black color is completely visible for now we can change it just right here after a comma opacity and we'll define the opacity as let's say 0.5 fine now save the program try to drag this box and you can see on dragging the opacity changes to 0.5 of this particular box the same thing will go for box 2 as well because we have defined the axis as x we are not able to move the box in other directions so let's comment this axis for now save it now and you can see now we are able to move these boxes freely fine the next thing we can do here is we can also limit the dragging area of this box we can either limit it to the division or to the document as well so for that we have to define a property over here we have to write here after a comma containment and then we have to write here either parent for division and for document we have to write here document only so let's do it with parent save the program and you can see the area is limited now we can drag it till here only we can't drag it out of this box because we have a division over here defined as well and these boxes are present inside that division if you go back to the html document you can see here we have this div tag as well we can move these boxes only inside this div tag we can't go out of this so this is how we can limit the dragging area of a particular element another property we can use is the grid property so let's write here first and then you can understand it much better i guess so we'll write here grid and we'll define the grid inside these brackets we'll write here 300 comma 300 now save the program and you guys will get it much better but before that let's comment this piece of code we are not going to limit the draggable area of these boxes save it now and now on dragging the box you can see that it automatically stops after 300 pixels and the in between movement of the box is not visible let me zoom out the browser for you and you can see it more clearly now you can see the box stopping after 300 pixels and the in between movement of this box is not visible so this is how we can use the grid property to make it look more interactive to the user now the last two properties we are going to discuss today are the snap and the snap tolerance properties if the snap property is set to true then the two boxes will stick together if closer to each other the snap tolerance property defines the distance between the elements to stick together so let's use them here first we'll comment this grid as well we'll write here after this snap so snap is a boolean property we'll write here true for that and we'll write here snap tolerance fine 
and we'll set snap tolerance to let's say 100 pixels. This is in pixels. Keep this thing in mind. Now, if the distance between the two boxes at any time becomes 100 or less than 100, then both the boxes will stick together. Save the program and you can see over here that moving the first box near to the second one, they are sticking together, right? The snap tolerance is 100. It means that if we try to bring the box near to box 2 and the distance between them is either 100 or less than that, then the boxes will stick together. So this is how we can use the draggable interaction to make our web page more interactive. I hope you guys got it. So that's all for this video guys. See you in the next one where we'll go through sortable interaction in jQuery UI. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments below. Share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe Simply Code. Thank you.